love you. So this is our take versus takeout. This is where we take a takeout dish and then we clean it up and we do our version of it. How long is it gonna take? 41 to 51 minutes. Do you All think right. you can beat that? Easy. Oh my God, that smells so good. Seamus, look what I got. Hey, I'm Seamus. I'm one of the chefs here around the Goop HQ, and I've got my friend Ayana. Hello. For another edition of Our Take versus Takeout. As I understand, you are a big fan of takeout. I love takeout. You like takeout? You take out all the time? All the time. Okay. Do you cook for yourself at home too? Uh, not really. Uh, no. <laughs> but I would love to start okay. doing it. Cool. That. Well, we're going to show you a really simple dish, kind of based on whatever you end up ordering for takeout, and then clean it up a little bit and show you how easy it is to make at home and how it actually can be probably faster than ordering takeout. Okay. You think you can order some lunch today? I'm thinking of ordering lunch okay. today. What are you going to get? I'm thinking John and Benny's. All right. A spicy fusilli sounds really good right now. You want to go ahead and order it? Yeah, I'm going to okay. order it right now. Let's see. So how long is it going to take? You've got 41 to 51 minutes. Do you All think right. you can beat that? Easy. I'm going to put 41 minutes on the clock, and then I'm going to take a little nap, and I'll get started in a little bit. OK, well, I've got to get back to work. So All right. I'll, I'll come check in. Cool. See ya. So 40 minutes, I'm gonna do the first thing I always do when I'm cooking. Heat up my pot over medium low heat here. Get some olive oil in there. Nice little splash of olive oil. I'm gonna get some garlic, Fresno chili, San Marzano tomato, and a little balsamic vinegar. All right, get these, these guys open. So I'm gonna make basically a riff on pasta puttanesca, but instead of using pasta, I'm gonna spiralize some celery root and use that and cook it into a nice tomato sauce. I got my spiralizer, some caper berries, celery root, and some black olives. Normally, I'll put in anchovies, but I happen to know that Ayana's not a fan of anchovies, so I'm gonna leave those out. So this is what celery root looks like, and I'm just gonna peel it, throw it on the spiralizer. So this is a little trick that I always use in the kitchen. I peel it right onto a sheet pan, and that way it makes it easy to clean it up. I love using celery root for spiralized vegetables because it can stand up to the cooking. You'll still get that semi kind of al dente texture that you would get from pasta. But instead of actually cooking this in water, I'm just gonna cook it directly into the sauce that I'm gonna make. And then trim the root, and trim off the top, set it on the spiralizer, put that in, and... You get those nice noodles. And what I like to do is just kind of break them up a little bit so they're not super long, because otherwise they're a little difficult to eat. Set those aside. So I'll take a Fresno chili, cut it in half, cut it in half again, and then take the seeds out. Seeds are gonna be super spicy, but they're also difficult to digest. And then do a nice julienne. When you're dicing, I like to make a julienne first for peppers and then turn it sideways and do a nice fine little dice like that. It's a good way to get a, an even sized mince. This is called a brunoise. So if I only had 20 minutes to make this pasta, I would definitely be moving a lot faster. But since it's gonna take 41 to 50 minutes, I'm not too concerned about time. A couple cloves of garlic here. I'm just gonna peel it. And if you find your garlic is really difficult to peel, one of the things you can do is you can just heat up a little bit of hot water and pour that hot water over the garlic in a bowl and the skins will come right off. Do a thin slice. You kind of want this garlic just melt down into the sauce. The inside of the garlic is the germ and some people like to pull that out. If the garlic starts to sprout, I will always cut that and take it out, but otherwise I, I leave it in. All right, so we've got olive oil going on in here. So the olive oil is moving around nicely in the bottom of the pan. It's not super hot, but it's, you know, relatively warm. I'm going to put the garlic in. Now I'm going to add in my Fresno chili. And just sweat that out a bit. And I'll go in with San Marzano tomatoes. If you've got whole tomatoes, you can just crush them up with your hand if you want, but these are all chunked out, so I'm just going to let them go in and start to cook down. Now I want to get some nice salinity in there as well. So I'm gonna add in some caper berries. So these are caper berries. When the caper plant, which grows wild all over Sicily, flowers, you get, first you get the purple flower, which is really beautiful. And then after that, you have the little caper, which most people know is the small little, teeny little briny creature that we love. And then the last thing you get is the caper berry, which is the actual fruit. They're very bitter, you can't eat them raw. 
but when you brine them just like with an olive, they become these really awesome saline deliciousness that brings a lot of flavor into the into the party. And uh, of course, speaking of flavor, I normally put anchovies in here for that umami flavor, but apparently Ayana's a little scared of anchovies. She actually said that she will eat anchovies, but just not whole ones. Oh, can we still, will we not have them in then? Why not? Should we do it? Yeah, let's, let's do, it. do it. Sweet. I happen to think anchovies make everything a little bit better, especially when you're making a sauce. They bring some umami flavor. In fact, this whole sauce is gonna have a lot of umami because tomatoes are super high in umami, so are capers, olives, and then of course the anchovies. The only thing when you're cooking with anchovies, be careful of the amount of salt that you put into, into whatever you're cooking because the anchovies will make it kind of salty. Look who it is. Oh, hello. Hey, How are you? We're making putanesca, but with Ooh. celery root. Oh, Look at that. Cool. And Ayana doesn't like Ayana's like anchovies, so I'm sneaking them in so she'll never know. Oh my god, that smells so good. They're gonna be good. Okay, bye. Thank See ya. Love you. Ciao. All right, back to our reg regularly scheduled program here. All right, so I've got all these great things coming together in the sauce. It's gonna take like 20 minutes or so for this to all cook down, and then I'll add in the celery root. Some olives. These are nice oil cured olives. You can use any kind of olive you want. What's up? 10 minutes? Better turn the heat up here. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll puree the sauce, but I'm just gonna kind of crush this up a little bit with a slotted spoon. Needs a little bit of salt and need some pepper. Put the balsamic in, that's gonna bring out some of the sweetness in the tomatoes. And now we'll throw some fresh herbs in there. Parsley, basil, and oregano. I'm gonna save some of these herbs for garnishing at the end, but I'm gonna let some of them cook right in. All right, so she's getting food. I'm gonna get the celery root, the pasta, if you will. I want it to just cook down a little bit so it's still gonna have some texture, it's still gonna be al dente. But I'm looking for, you know, just for them to start to get kind of soft and malleable. I think it's all coming together here. This is not too difficult. You saw the sauce came together in really like just a few minutes. Well, according to my clock, I still have 15 minutes to go, but the delivery got here a little bit earlier. Look what I got. We gotta get these plated so we all can right. do a taste test. So I've got my cleaned up version. Let's see what you've got. Some sili. So this has got some dairy in it. It does. Mm-hmm. Mine does not. This has got some gluten in it. Mine does not. Okay, okay. That's so you have pasta fusilli and red sauce. So I made you puttanesca, which is a variation on a classic pasta dish, but instead of using pasta, I spiralized celery root. So you got lots of good veg in there, low carb, no sugar, no dairy. Super cleaned up and healthy. That sounds awesome. It's time for the taste test. Let's do this. I'm gonna start with the fusilli. Okay. Mm, that right there. Super good. It's creamy, spicy, everything I want. Mm. All right. Now, to try All right. the puttanesca. I've actually never had celery root before. You before. haven't? No. Let's see. Oh, wow, that's really good. Good stuff? Yeah. There's a little spice in it. Mm -hmm. I love the tomato sauce. What else did you put in it? Well, there's a little secret ingredient in there, which I heard that you don't like, which is anchovy. <laughs> That's why it's so good. The That's anchovy so brings it all together. See, everyone's so scared of anchovies, but a little bit of anchovy in a tomato sauce makes it really, really good. No, oh, that was actually really good. <laughs> and really easy, it didn't take that much. I mean, it was actually quicker than the takeout. Yeah. So you can see, it doesn't take that much time to make a really, really delicious and healthy meal, inspired by one of your favorites, but cleaning up a little bit and making it a little more, you know, goopified. I actually Dig need it? to get that recipe. Well, you know where you can get it. Goop.com. Oh my God. Thanks, Ayana. Thanks for playing with us. So next time, what are you gonna do? Next time, instead of ordering takeout, I'm just gonna cook this awesome. instead. Awesome. Subscribe and you guys can make these easy recipes at home too. And in the meantime, I'm gonna take this back to my desk. Later. Bye. Uh, now, which one do you really like? That was actually really good. Never had celery root or the anchovies. I didn't even, I didn't even taste it. Yeah, I did not. it's cooked in. Well, we were gonna put it in, but then I was like, you know what, she's not even gonna notice. What? Yeah. That was shocking. Well, you guys got me. <laughs>